We've all been there. You're walking around during the night, coming from a party, when suddenly you look up and you notice how wonderful clear the night sky is. Maybe some of you even remember an anecdote from a teacher or a relative telling you that the light from these stars has often traveled many, many years before it found its way onto our eyes. Or it could be that you just remember from Carol's talk like two hours ago. I mean, whatever works. Because stars are so distant, studying them can be a very challenging task. It's one of the reasons why I studied physics and astronomy, because how could we learn so much when there's so little to work with? Astronomers don't have a controlled lab environment where they can carefully monitor all aspects of their object of study. Instead, galaxies are often in a very chaotic and turbulent environment. And because they're so far away, it's not like we can physically go there to get some samples. On top of that, we're stuck looking at these things from one side, where we basically only get a two-dimensional projection of something that's intrinsically three dimensions. It's like you're trying to recreate an entire house when the only thing you get is a picture from one side. So how do we even start solving that problem? Luckily, light can carry a lot of information. Just look at the world around you and notice how much we can learn just by looking at things. The color, the intensity, the way objects reflect light can tell us whether they're smooth or coarse, whether they're hot or cold, whether they're made from metal or wood. In a similar way, astronomers can extract information from light coming from stars to learn more about their temperature, their movement, their composition. But because we have vast amounts of data of billions of galaxies, there is no way that we can do all of this manually. And we need artificial intelligence programs to help us understand this data for us. And it's something that they're, they're really good at. I mean, and it's really not the boring part of the job. To see an algorithm that's self-learning and that you can see picking up new rules in front of your eyes can be very self-fulfilling and rewarding. It's a bit like becoming a parent every single time and without the horror of actual childbirth. It's not like these self-learning self programs grow on trees, unfortunately. Although, maybe they do. A lot of these programs found their nature, have actually their root in nature. Like, for example, let's have a look at how a giraffe is adjusted so well to its environment, with the taller neck and legs. Over the years, there has been a selection where giraffes that were not tall enough would be stuck eating leaves closer to the ground, therefore unable to reach this large pool of nutrition that the taller ones were able to get to. Because of this disadvantage, over time, they disappeared, because their chance of surviving and creating offspring was smaller. So it's because of this harsh filtering, where we add random mutations to introduce new characteristics, that the giraffe as an animal has become how we know it, with the large neck and legs. It's this systematically favoring the fittest and only using those to create offspring that creates such a powerful mechanism, which we can translate into a program. We can translate it into an algorithm, which is essentially a set of procedures and instructions a computer can understand. A genetic algorithm is an algorithm that captures the essence of evolution theory. It does so by creating a lot of random models and adding a lot of random mutation and then filtering out those that are best fitted to solve a given problem. To see how this is used in a real-life example, let's have a look at this. The top image is a real observed galaxy that we see in two dimensions. The bottom image is a genetic algorithm trying to recreate that image. And we'll see it starts off quite randomly, making wild guesses. But 
Over time, you can see it starts picking up new rules and more information out of this image until it ends up with something that's actually pretty close to the original one. And I can hear a lot of you people think like, okay, you had great stuff, but if you just wanted to kind of recreate that image, you could have just copy-pasted it, right? So why bother? Um, the difference is that from the lower image, we have the exact three-dimensional distribution. So we know where the stars are, how they're distributed, how old they are, how the dust is distributed. So in the analogy of the house that we made before, it's like we're creating a lot of random houses and taking pictures from all sides until we have that one picture that we were looking for. Genetic algorithms help us quickly find those that are up for the case and remove the ones that are clearly not doing a good job. But we can even do better than this. Our human eyes only see a limited amount of colors and wavelengths. But these galaxies emit on way more than just this. They emit from the very short x-rays that a doctor, for example, uses to check whether your bones are fractures, all the way up to the very long radio waves. And they can take all of this information together to scan this object in a much smarter way and extract information from data that no human eye has ever directly seen. But genetic algorithms are not the only nature-inspired program. Swarm intelligence is the intelligence we see in large groups of insects and birds that seemingly move as one large organism. They do so without ever colliding, without ever communicating, and without even having a leader that orchestrates the entire scenery. Swarm intelligence will be used a lot to solve optimization problems, guide drones, and manipulate satellites for years to come. But it's not just science fiction. Um, swarm intelligence already solves quite a lot of problems today, with a lot of GPS systems having algorithms that are based on ant colonies. Because ants have perfected the art of finding the optimal route between their colony and a source of nutrition. They do so by first spreading out randomly until they found some food, at which point the ant that found the food starts spreading out some pheromones. These pheromones are then picked up by the other ants nearby, who are now more likely to follow that path than the random path before. So over time, more and more ants start following that path and even reinforce it by spreading out pheromones themselves. So ants have optimized their travel time in a very clever way, and they can do so very flexibly, very flexible in whenever sudden changes in the environment take place. But there's an even more common example. Water has the remarkable feature that it always finds the path of least resistance. It never runs uphill. So by carefully simulating these water drops, we can create a very powerful mechanism that can be used to solve optimization problems and potentially our future traffic jams. So it seems that wherever we look in nature, we always find some sort of intelligence. And this should not come as a total surprise, because a lot of these laws and mechanisms have existed for millions of years and have been fine-tuned to perfection. And we as humans should learn how to exploit this knowledge and take nature's expertise on this if we want to advance and learn more about our universe. As we speak, artificial intelligence helps us understand how galaxies are formed and evolved from the Big Bang up until today. They extract information out of these vast amounts of data and learn more about our universe, just as we do. Their goal being the same as ours, to watch and learn. And while we still have quite a few problems to solve up in the night sky, I bet that there might still be a few solutions laying right here at our feet. Thank you. <laughs>